and Girl for Space, if there's any kind of nonprofit or promoting space thing, I am very likely involved <laughs> in some way or another. Um, I pretty much can't go to any of these conferences without scheming with somebody about how to do this. So, currently scheming with space up. So the point of this one is it's more of a discussion uh, about how to popularize space. We have great stories. Um, I don't know if, how many of you were in that narrative talk an hour ago. So we have the stories about space. Uh, we have very exciting um, hardware to look at. We have great video. Uh, hopefully, more and more of the space new space companies will allow more and more video to come out there. As we can hope NASA will change and let even more information out, but the current rate it's going cl more closed than open. Uh, but the thing is, apparently I'm not a lot of uh, but the problem is distribution, really, in my mind, is we have this information, and we're great at sharing it with each other, but how do we get it out there to other people? So, there's a lot of different ways, and obviously in the internet age, it's getting easier and easier. But one of the first ones that was mentioned to me uh, last week was to stop talking to each other. We are great networkers with each other. I mean, I Amanda here, she lives quite far away from me, and we know each other quite well because of largely space stuff. I have no idea if she has a family or uh, a pet or anything else, but I know everything about her space. <laughs> um, so one of the things to do, that I, my first encouragement, is to stop talking to each other. Or not stop, but uh, more talk to other people. Possibilize. Yeah. Um, Evangelist. Yeah, exactly. That's one of those uh, kind of... Uh, hot words these days, you know? I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an evangelist. It's one of those words that came up repeatedly in <laughs> our little introduction session. So talk to other people. If you have a Twitter feed or you have a Facebook page or a blog or whatever, yeah, keep talking about space, but follow some people who don't know anything about space. Follow some people who say they hate space and they're not interested at all. And follow as many people as you can. Follow your friends who don't really want to hear any more about space and make them listen. Uh, and one of the things I do uh, in my feed and with my friends to make it so that they want to follow back, they want to hear about these space things, as opposed to just going, oh yeah, there goes Mary Michael on her space cadet thing again, let's just humor her for a minute and then walk away, uh, is try to mix it up with stuff that really has nothing to do with space. Um, or it just makes space funny. A lot of what you hear in the news today, which really upsets me, is that space is dead, space is depressing, space is dangerous, and it's kind of like, we in this group know, like, space is awesome. I mean, that's the one phrase that probably gets spit around in space more than anything else. Space is, insert awesome adjective at the end. So, when you're doing, uh, when you're talking to these other people, try to make it fun and funny. Um, one of the things on our eight-hour drive, me and my husband were talking about was, uh, making a video about uh, the future street sweepers for orbital debris. And what would happen, you know, it really sucks when somebody's space station, they won't move it out of orbit for the first Monday of the month, and you have to tow it to the space impound. And making a whole video about that, which would just be goofy and really not scientific at all, <laughs> and totally ridiculous. But the thing is, if you look at the modern media, 90% of it is ridiculous. I mean, come on. Did anybody see Jersey Shore this week? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's super popular. So one of the things we need to do with space is, while educating and talking about the really cool science and engineering and everything, is to um, make it silly a little bit. Um, that was my other big thing about space, is that too often we're like, wow, did you hear about the new like scientific thing where if you do this amazing engineering thing and you, lose, you lost the person the moment you said science or engineering? But you start talking about space cats, which we did earlier. <laughs> Pretty much everybody was listening because cats in space is hilarious. <laughs> so, um. Exactly. See, there's, there's a great viral video somebody trying to hold a cat in space. <laughs> so, those are my first two things, but I kind of wanted to get it rolling with that and hear what other people's ideas are. So, talk to other people and make it fun. Make it relevant. Find, find things about about um, people. People are self-interested, basically. Like you mentioned, the internet's terrific, but everybody talks, as you said, to the people who are interested in what they're interested in. 
So you got to find a way to kind of get in there and make it relevant. And one one easy target right now. I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday who's has zero interest in the space program, but he is interested in America getting back in to be number one again, right? So find you know find ways that, that the space pro that the private space program, if not yeah, the government one, one uh, is going to put America back on the map. Because right now it feels like it's going the other direction, like giving up the shuttle and all that stuff. So um, make it relevant to other people. Yeah, that works so well. If anybody has connections to the news media or you know wants to encourage the news media, is try to if you can make your space story relevant to your local media, that's a lot bigger than you know. You talk something global, and unless you're able to talk to Fox News or CBS or some global organization, they're not really going to be interested. Um, and also with them, it's really great to play the whole like, "Is your baby trying to kill you?" story, <laughs> where it starts out really scary and tense, and everybody wants to watch, and so it's like. Is your local space company trying to kill you? And then it goes out, no, actually, they're really, really great. <laughs> so try to, you know, spin stories to the audience that you're talking to. That's very important. Using less acronyms. It's endemic. And I went over, I was just going to call it NA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely less acronym. Talk, talk on the level that you're talking to. Um, we're pretty lucky here with our friends that you can talk at a pretty high level on stuff and, and reference things that have happened in the past and it makes total sense. But me, coming from my past, was in the entertainment industry. If I were to mention, like, oh yeah, so after Columbia, this and this and this happened, and they go, Unfortunately, most of my generation would go, I, I kind of remember, which one's, I know the Columbia was the one disaster one, but which disaster, was it the up disaster or the down disaster? Yeah. Uh, was it NASA, where? And so you have to kind of like give some history, talk to, talk on the level, you know? If you're not gonna go and talk to a kid about space and be like, okay, so this is the calculus of delta V, you're gonna have a five-year-old look at you with glazed eyes, so no acronyms. And, Talk on the level of the person you're talking to. So, so um, you know, a great example of that is Carl Sagan when he talked about astronomy. I mean, he popularized astronomy so everyone got it. I mean, people changed, people's careers came out of that series, the Cosmos series. And so, uh, you know, I'm not saying that we have to have a single person do that, but on the level of, you know, going out and talking about things and putting it in perspective, almost answering each of those points. Making yeah. it fun, making it relevance, you know, making it uh, understandable. Neil deGrasse Tyson's doing a new Cosmos. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 He, so just, he just announced it yesterday. We need to do that for the space industry. There have been a couple of attempts to launch, you know, more kind of space reality TV shows, but a lot of these companies are thinking like on this big scale, how can I get a network involved in following the new space race and stuff, which would be great, but why wait? I mean, look at the Guild. Have yeah. you guys seen that yes. show? I love that show. I mean, it's awesome. It barely costs them that much at all. And the thing is viral. So why not, you know, if somebody's available, take on that project. Start just doing a web video of the reality of new space. So, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so there was something that just came out of the last session of the called um, Appeal to Emotion. Mm -hmm. Because we are stirred by emotion. That's what Carl did. We're stirred to yeah. action by emotion. We you know, use our rational mind to justify what we just wanted to do, right? But but it's our emotion that moves us to do things, and it moves anybody to do things. So we can appeal to emotion, and that's a good thing. So uh, maybe I disagree with you a little bit. Okay, um, One of the We had a, a discussion here before you, some folks came in about um, how do you involve scientists more in actually talking to the public? And the danger is if we do too much stuff that's too silly, I think a lot of scientists are concerned that almost all talking to the public is that way. And the question, I think, a question for a lot of people in the room who are in the profession is, you know, how do we come up with things that are interesting and relevant, talking on a level and appeal to emotions and give a sense of wonder that nobody does anymore? You know, everything is, is sound bites and cats in space, and you can do some of that. But if most of what's out there gets picked up and is, is that way, you know, we, we somehow we have to find ways to take the stuff that is interesting that we can deal with on our level and not assume that the general public is stupid. You know, how do we educate people 
without it, without them knowing that they're being educated, how do you take people who are doing really interesting science and get them out in front of people in a way that people understand and will relate to emotionally? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a hazard if you go too far in one direction, that you know it'll scare off a lot of people doing science stuff from going anywhere near any of these things. And so sure. my know, experience with that is that. Um, a lot of engineers and scientists just don't know how to talk, right. unfortunately. they You get them in front of a crowd, you get them even in front of a very small crowd, and they get very monotone, they get very nervous, and, and unfortunately, and they're in a lot of those industries. But then you have the alternative people like, I don't know if you guys have heard Chris McKay talk over at NASA Ames. Oh, yes. This is the funniest man <laughs> when he talks about you know anything with space, and it's hilarious. So you have to find that balance. I think. There is definitely the risk of going too silly, but in my mind, at this point, we are so far the other direction in news media. We're so far into the, you know, serious, depressing, you know, politics of space that, you know, we can hit both ends and hopefully somehow in the middle it'll come. If we get, say we get 100,000 people to watch Cats in Space, and maybe just 5% of those people, 10% of those people go, wait, what actually is zero gravity? What actually is a parabolic flight and stuff? And those people go to find the other off offerings out there, the other videos about the actual science of it, the, the more technical stuff, then we've succeeded in my mind if you can get even that small percentage to go from silly to serious. I think it's fun is a better word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what keeps coming up is the, the story. The story, why are the people who are interested in the science interested in the science? Why, you know, we talk about scientists and engineers not knowing how to talk, but when you start talking to, if I start talking to any of the people in this room, for example, we might be a little standoffish for a minute, and then I say, well, why are you involved in XYZ project? And their eyes light up, and it's like, well, this is really cool, and we can do this, and we can go, and we don't have to be perfect to go, and we can make this happen, and you, you just start getting a story. And I start thinking, well, I feel like that sometimes about things. I have something in common with this person maybe I can listen to this person. Whereas five minutes ago, this person was a rocket engineer and I have nothing in common with you. Yeah, so. and if you can find a way to take that story, whether your story is how I got into space to something that's happening in NASA, and distill it down to a way that you can deliver it, either through 140 characters or through a three minute video, believe me, if you go much longer than three minutes, you've lost 99% of your audience uh, after that three minutes or you know whatever else or even talking to somebody how can you you know communicate it in a way that fits into our unfortunately short attention span neil degrasse tyson does an amazing job of yes yeah. he, he, he did a whole show on death by black hole has anybody seen that love the book where he talks yeah he talks about what it would be like by dying by falling into a black hole and talks about how your body will stretch and snap at one point and he's just an amazing communicator um, to the point where it's just anyone who's listening not only is or is just completely focused on what he has to say but is learning something at the same time no matter if they're a scientist or not <coughs> he's just very good at putting it in terms of that anyone can understand how about to add to the list uh, Joining forces, because it's may, it may be something that's actually starting to happen more recently. But I know that like the internet, by and large, hit kind of like that that huge expanse where everybody everybody all of a sudden said, oh, we have a we have a we have a way to speak out there. We have we have our we have our way to expose ourselves. And when you do that, you also tend to water down everybody. Everybody kind of gets lost in the noise. Then you'll see it start to kind of like focus again. And I think that's what you're trying to see now, but like joining forces, stuff like this, space up. Everybody getting together and talking about it. We're going to go out there with maybe, we'll still have dozens of different ideas, but now we'll have the input of others in those ideas, and so they will start to kind of form lines, storylines, that uh, will be easier to actually present to the layperson who, if you just all of a sudden bombard the layperson with, 40, 50 tweets or something like that. Stop uh, following you. <laughs> of, 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 I lose a lot of uh, Twitter fans around this time of the year when I go to these conferences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, but if you bombard them with 40 or 50 tweets about the same subject or something, their minds turn off. And again, that's another relevancy thing is um, how do you communicate something that is technical, something that maybe they start to go, oh my God, shut up about it already. 
Uh, how do you relate it? So an example that I use a lot is the, the Space Diver program. There's a couple of different companies getting into this is the idea of orbital skydiving or suborbital skydiving is not only as a, a safety measure, you know, how to bail out, but also just for fun. And when I try to explain this to people, they're like, seriously, how, I don't even, I can't even imagine in my mind what that would look like. What do I do? Most recent Star Trek. They, get, they dive and they land on that big, whatever that mining thing was. And yeah, it's not a perfect comparison. Yes, our suits aren't going to be in Power Ranger colors. Um, but still right. I don't know, I'm not sure. Colors, we can do Power Ranger. <laughs> exactly. So there you go. So there's an example of that. I say, oh, well, you know, Star Trek, this, this diving scene. And suddenly it clicks in their head and they're like, oh, that's awesome. I totally want to do that. <laughs> Well, so one thing, I, don't, I know he didn't come up with it, but I feel like he sort of popularized it in you know, the book Enchantment with Guy Kawasaki, talking about ubiquity versus scarcity. And you know, you've got scarcity, like Google Plus, I don't know how many people have heard of this, or even when, Google, when Gmail came out, it's like only if you had an invite could you get in, right? And then the other side was ubiquity, like who hasn't heard of Twitter? Um, you know, the gates are open and there's so many people on it that, you know, you got the fail well. Kind of, but I feel like those two sort of, you know, trying to figure out which one, which direction we want to go in with the space industry is like, are we ubiquitous or are we scarce? And <coughs> well, that's another thing is, you know, there's some people are going to think ubiquitous is great, let's get out as much as we can. Or some people are going to say, no, if we do the scarcity thing, it'll seem like some kind of really cool club to be in. But you know what, there's an argument. And have the argument on Twitter. Or have the argument online or something, because a lot of times, like, come on. How, who can name a feud between some celebrities that got more coverage than like you know a launch, which is really really sad. But having that kind of like attention and, and argument and, and again we go back to emotion. If there seems like there's emotion involved in it, then people are like, wait, what, what are the backgrounds of these stories? It's not too going after them. Well, very I'm, shy I'm, arm I'm, raisers here. There's been some <laughs> conversations with us trying to keep it on, but. But I almost think there's too many of us to be scarce. I mean, there's, 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 oh, we have such temper. With all kinds of temper. <laughs> it's super <laughs> scarce. How many people have been in order? I mean, it's a very right. scarce. No, I, I think there's, there's too many of us to be scarce. I think uh, we, there's a lot of different diffraction. I mean, there's all kinds of organizations that are all trying to promote the same idea, but uh, you know, maybe there needs to be a, a centralizing or a, or a focusing uh, of, of those groups' efforts to make it really make a point. Yeah, as long as when we focus them in, they then go out to their communities that are not space people. And also, the you know, encourage, if anybody, I'm sure there's, well, two examples in this room of people who are in control of the media that comes out from a certain company is encouraging your company to share as much as possible. Obviously, we don't want to, you know, give away secrets or IP or anything like that, but if there is even the smallest thing you know, a launch test that you've done three times and the fourth time you're willing to film it and share it with people, then believe me, at least me, I will be retweeting it a hundred times. <laughs> so I want as much as possible. Um, one thing, and this is a very small thing, but it seems like it is at least something, is creating things. Like, one of my favorite people on Twitter is Flying Jenny. I love the space crafts that she does. Like, crafts as in felted, uh, did you see her felted hubble? It was beautiful. Little, you know, things like that. Um, you know, I write stories and, and do little paintings. Other people do crafts. I, there's some beautiful space stuff on Etsy. Mm -hmm. And these little things, like, it, unfortunately, I didn't wear them today because I'm in the middle of a movie. I couldn't find them. A friend made me Mars earrings that have Mars with the two moons in orbit around them. And I get questions about them, and I can explain it. And it's a tiny thing, but it at least it, it engages an emotion. Yeah, and it's a lead-in. It's a lead-in, and it's something people ask you, oh, what are you working on? Oh, what is this? And... It's, you know, it's a tiny thing, but you look at, say, the 60s when you have the space race going on, and everything is space-themed, crafts and, and kids' games and everything. So it seems like trying to get back into that may not be such a bad idea. Yeah, and obviously Legos is a great example oh, okay. of that. I mean, I'm pretty sure we all love Legos and building spacecraft with them. <laughs> but doing more, yeah, more crafts are great. I wish I'd worn it today, but I have a little ring that has a little rocket ship on it, and... Pretty much every time I wear that, people go, rocket ship, and then that's my perfect lead into, let me talk about the latest space development. Because, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that a lot of times, like you're saying, with emotion, it has to be personalized, or else they kind of feel disconnected, and they don't want to learn about it, because they feel like they're not included. Because 
I learned a lot of times that, that people, especially humans, like to, to feel like they're a part of something that's bigger than themselves. Um, and they like to belong. And so, um, especially like with, with things like, um, take for instance like me, um, a couple years ago, if, if I would have heard about um, engineering or, or rockets or something, like rocket engineers, someone told me like, oh, you, are you interested in engineering? I would have been like, no, but that's because I didn't understand it. But once I realize, once you take out all like the example, like the anagrams and the technical things, and you kind of bring it down to a personal level, realize that this is something I can do. Like and not just like rockets, but for people, they've realized that this is something I can do. Then it makes it a lot cooler because then they can make their own personal connection, which is. Yeah. And the tweet ups are a great example of that. I mean, if any of you've been to like a NASA tweet up, um, most of that room is people who aren't involved in space. And the fact that they got to be involved, even on the smallest level, was so exciting. For me, going to SDS-135, my, one of my favorite moments was when the whoever Air Force lady who's in charge of deciding whether the weather is a go or no go, she came in and told us first. And so we were all tweeting it. We all felt so <laughs> special in that one moment. We're like, yay, we beat the media. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, doing tweet ups, doing any kind of thing where you bring the people actually to it and make them feel like they're a part of it and then telling them, look, you know, you'll actually maybe someday get to ride on this thing. Just real quick, how many people have actually been to a space tweet up? Right? Does anybody not know what a tweet up is and I need to explain it? Sort of? I was going to Google it yeah. later. I'm not familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so a tweet up is basically an event that originates or is planned around Twitter. I mean, they've NASA has taken it to a level where 90% of it is not arranged on Twitter anymore, but the point, the original point of the tweet up was to get people who are active on Twitter to come to an event or come to, you know, just a meetup, and because they're active on Twitter, they're going to popularize whatever you're giving them because they're on Twitter and they're going to start talking about it. That was the point. It's kind of morphed into this way of meeting up with people that you wouldn't normally meet up with, the space tweets in our case. Find a bunch of people and you suddenly start to realize who's in your area, you can meet up, have dinner, or you can go to a launch and stuff. And it's just a, it's a very easy, informal, fun way to arrange things. Uh, we arranged one for a new space uh, conference last week. We just had it at the Hacker Dojo. and. I tweeted it and we kind of put it on the website and I didn't really do anything and we had 150 people come. And it was just so much fun. We had Legos out too, so that might have had something to do with it. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, if you're in Mojave and you want to arrange a tweet up, even if you're not associated, if you just went to visit, yeah, get the local people. Or even if you're in Minnesota or in your hometown, start tweeting and find who is in your area that likes what you like and then meet up with them. That's a great way to start getting the joining forces, Twitter and you can do the same thing on Facebook, but Facebook up just really doesn't have the same ring. So, face up. Face up. <laughs> Here's a question. Maybe you're focused on too narrow an audience. Maybe you're focused on the U.S. audience too much. But, but like, if you look at the history of you know, space flight, like the liquid propulsion rocket was developed by the Germans who learned of Goddard's research and, uh, you know, did their own research there. So it's like there are people in other countries might be more, I actually think what we're doing is really cool. And if they get interested, that may indirectly spur. Well, just real quick, there's been interest in both India and the UK for our space effort out of there. So it, there is interest yeah. elsewhere. Too. I mean, I'm a big fan of going international as much as you can with the space stuff because I like, I personally like the idea of, you know, international peace through space exploration and banding against the aliens and stuff. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, uh, you know, keep in mind that, that one of the, the big emotional spurs of the 60s was competition, mm -hmm. right? right? And so I like going international just because it will wake some people yeah. up over here, yeah. okay? Fr frankly, once, once because the once you get to the Chinese or somebody, yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah. you know, then it's going to get serious. And, and so that will, that's really going to stir the pot. <laughs> get people elsewhere excited about the fact that, you know, the sleeping giant ain't doing nothing or is moving a bit slow, you may have an opportunity. We got about three, yeah, four minutes. Three, four minutes. Okay. So yeah. Well, since we have three, four minutes, one yeah, of the things I, I wanted to. The next one is mine. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was more than his. Really, you know, we're working together a little bit. So. Um, one of the things I wanted to think was like have everybody take a minute to think about when they leave space up and they leave this little kind of somewhat false sense of that there's a ton of us. Um, 
to like think about the one thing that you're going to do when you go home or while you're here to make all of your friends or family that don't know about space like picking something off the list and one kind of outlet whether it be Facebook, Twitter, video, blog, talking, meetups, tweet ups, whatever. And what are you going to do to try to like do that? So I just wanted to go around the room and have everybody give one little idea even if it's just something as small as like I'm going to go home and tell my friends over the next dinner party about space up. So for me, I am going to um, try to expand my Twitter sphere to include less face tweets and more of other people, or you know, more of both. Either way. <laughs> um, I've been trying to get more involved with like hacker spaces and people who are already kind of like tech inclined. They're kind of like easy uh, targets, I want to say, for this kind of stuff. They're usually space geeks already, but they just didn't know that they could get involved. I have no idea. I'm, I I I, uh, I have a book, book blog project that's been kicking around for a long time that I probably should work on. That would be the most direct thing. I do so many media related things. I have no excuse for not having a good answer to this, but I don't have a good answer for this. <laughs> well, you know, you have a crowd. Once you get the blog going, you can you tell go. us all about it. I'm gonna go home and get on all four of the San Diego homeschooling yeah. lists that I'm on. There's about I don't know several thousand people at this point and tell them about space. Uh, student interest groups. At my high school, we have the capability to create a group around something that we're interested in. Just a few kids and a teacher is all you need to start it, and then it can grow as much as you want. So, awesome. that's a good one. Just thinking about doing some graffiti. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We're going to do space graffiti. Is that like social media? What's that? Wait a minute. That's awesome. It's going to be fun. I like it. I like it. I have an idea. Of, I want to write, like, how can we grow food in space? Yeah, I mean, there can be a lot think. of different things. <laughs> um, I don't have any ideas yet, but um, I'm going to have to talk to Kate about that. <laughs> well, I, I belong to the San Diego Space Society, and one of the things we already we do a fair amount of outreach, but I definitely want to start working with more with uh, high schools and art schools. like. Um, like what he was mentioning there, working with students to get more, uh, because it, a lot of people just don't know what's, what's available to them. And high school is a good time to start clicking those, you know, getting the interest to pay for our careers. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> um, what I really want to work on to fan with this is, I want to see about this aerospace teams dealio that some of the um, corporations are having like, athletic competitions. Um, I forget all the different ones. Like quite a few. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. That would make a viral video. I forget we were talking yes, about this earlier. Yes. So SpaceX and Boeing. Oh, the aerospace games. The aerospace, the aerospace games. games. So what I want to talk, I want to, what I want to work on is combining the already existing aerospace games with some extreme sport athletes. Getting them on teams. Seeing if I can get some interest. Seeing if I can get some interest from any networks or cable stations and then make a lot of money and also help space. But I really want to focus on making a lot of money. I think Tim Pickens is like a perfect person to rope into that. He pretty much strikes his pockets to everyone. No, no, we got better people for that. We do? The hybrids, you don't get enough of our time. Sadly, my next. Next outreach project will be to OSHA documenting second quarter training. Somebody's had to do a whole lot. Safety officer. I don't have anything specific, but I think leverage to reach a broader community is the key. And I think I think education, somehow finding a way into the classrooms. Uh, I don't have anything specific, but that's where the real leverage lies. I think. I'm a big fan of, you know, don't limit your classrooms to elementary or middle school, which currently is the kind of major outreach, but go for after, like, that first year of undergrad. Mm -hmm. Those people have no idea what they want to do with their life, and if you can rope them into doing space, why not? So. Yeah, we have our Silicon Valley Space Center, and so I'm kind of with Amanda is trying to penetrate this hacker group, and I spend my, you know, what, whatever extra time I have thinking about how to engage those guys, the guys and gals and everybody, and try and get some of that energy directed towards our new space endeavors, and just try and think of packages that they could implement. Because you talk to a number of people, and they're like, yeah, I used to be in 
aerospace engineer and now I work for Google or now I do this or now it's, and my view is just because the industry is sort of broken and it's chasing people away. Lockheed's laying people off and why would anyone want to go into this? And so I think it's to get that message out that there's a new space movement which is not the, uh, you know, the U.S. government going back to wherever but almost like the grassroots effort that's at a totally, totally different level that they can identify with. It's not $200 million effort, but it's something you can do at a, a smaller level so that they can not only just talk about it, but you know, be involved and get engaged. I want New Space to like actually make them think of rockets, because I had a conversation where I talked about New Space for like five minutes, and the guy went, so you're looking for new office space, right? <laughs> well, that's a, it, it didn't say, what are you interested in? I say, commercial space. And then they're like, okay, oh. retailing. Like, oh, no, commercial space flight yes. <laughs> is, is what it is. But, you know, you've got it essentially over the next 25 years, you've got an entire solar system that's out there that you really don't. I mean, I gave you a little CubeSat thing, um, Cube's lab. You know, what do you want to do in microgravity? I mean, where's the gold in there? And that's going to come from collective thinking about this problem and it's better if we have a lot more people thinking about it in whatever crazy ways they want to think about it. Collect those ideas. I was on the phone with my mom earlier this week and I was telling her, trying to explain what I'm doing this weekend, going to this event, and she's like, wow, it's just, you know, I can't, I know we go to space and, you know, we're involved with it, but she feels, I think, so disconnected from that world. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with some way, um, you know, online and maybe. Moms in space. Even just pointing out like how close she actually is without realizing it, aggregating all the stuff that's already out there on the web um, so that she can see that. If I could just interject, it, it may be handy to have a, 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 a quick answer. Um, when people ask, I was reading a commentary by a, a wow. former NASA astronaut who was saying all the reasons why we should never try to send a manned mission to Mars. This is going to be this and that and the other thing. And by the way, why would anyone want to go? So, yes, exactly. So if you have that quick answer that says, this is why anybody would want to go, it, it does make the connection a little bit, you know. I'll to come back tomorrow and tell everybody about it. <laughs> I guess I'll go and speed up more in my undergrad. <laughs> We're all going to be teachers. Nice. Make them space teachers. Teachers. Well, I don't know if there's an organization to follow on Facebook that has good articles, but one of the things I do for Native Plants is um, follow the Theodore St. Payne Foundation, and a friend of mine manages their Facebook page, and he's got a lot of good articles on why you're planting natives and saving water and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when you share that, then your friends also get to learn about that. And so if there's something like that that you can follow on your Facebook page and, and repost those articles and just um, branch out to your, to your, your Facebook page. I don't know if you have any suggestions on what to... There's, there's some good uh, space blogs out there. I don't know about uh, Facebook pages. There are some Facebook pages. Um, I know the, I think it's the Commercial Space Flight Federation, and then there's like one called, um, I don't know, it's We Want Our Space or Where Is Our Space or something like that. So basically, if you just search space, mm -hmm. they'll, or space flight or aerospace, I mean, a bunch come up, and I, you know, follow a bunch of them and see which ones end up actually posting. Dave? Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> bring the cost of space flight down to the point where uh, more people can uh, actively participate. Here, here. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you're doing enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's about to take a nap. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the underachiever in the room. <laughs> Continue to talk about spacey awesomeness at work. Nice. Want to go to the front row here and then we'll go back? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Um, I've been working a lot with uh, different middle schools in the area in South Bay, and uh, you'll be really surprised on how many kids have no idea what the space shuttle was, or what the International Space Station is. People, they, these kids don't know about the awesome things that we're doing in space, and I think space is an amazing force, to quote Neil deGrasse Tyson, on the educational pipeline of America, and it's it's just a way that uh, that I personally feel uh, that I can make the most difference, is kind of kind of educating young young folks so that they get excited about space again, and feel that connection. Youth indoctrination, I like it. Yeah. 
I will uh, continue to push with my friends with Hacker Dojo to uh, host more space events. And <laughs> Um, well, actually, no. Uh, for me, it's um, actually something that got discussed at uh, Space Up San Diego that I actually ended up creating is my current project, which is a fictional blog from the point of view of the first colonists on Mars oh. to create a narrative for people to understand how Mars, or really any place but Mars in particular, could be home. And I haven't written as much as I should, and I'm supposed to be collaborative, and I haven't actually gotten any other writers on board, so I'm going to pursue that a lot more aggressively and try to get a lot more people to read it. Yeah, making the connections between the, you know, sci-fi movies we see and what actually can really happen is awesome. Yes, sure. and it's really good, by the way. So <laughs> that's the fun thing about that. Um, <laughs> um, I I have a just a general blog, mostly a craft blog, but every now and then I sneak in, you know, something go space. <laughs> and so um, so yeah, I I tend to blog about you know stuff that I attend or whatever and. Um, this is my first ever like space event, so um, excited to be here. And so hopefully my 16 blog readers will, <laughs> will enjoy enjoy reading about my experience here. So. I'm actually going to go fly a kite on the beach. And the reason I say that is because when I fly the kite on the beach, little kids like this big will come up to you and just watch. And like, and you can go talk to them. You can go like let them fly the kite. I'm going to go fly water bottle rockets on the beach or something like that. And Honestly, like just doing that, kids will come up to you and they love it if it's in the air. So. But for me, uh, the, the biggest thing I've seen that I've done in the past for getting the word out is going back home. You know, I grew up in Chicago, went to school there and everything, and I, you know, I went back and talked to one of my professors about what I was doing and sent her a video to um, some of the SpaceX launches and stuff. She sent to a bunch of her students, and I immediately got like six intern resume applications. <laughs> so I think, I think going back home and being like, you know, I, I grew up here, you know, you know, I sat in that seat, you know, in the classroom and be like, and now look what I'm doing, um, and yeah, try to spread the word that way. Like, look what you can be doing and, and try to get excitement. That's awesome. I'm not going to ask this group, I don't think you guys were actually involved in the original conversation. But <laughs> you're welcome to talk to us later. But yeah, thank you guys all for your ideas. This is going to be awesome. And keep spreading space. Thank you.